So we got uh, short spindles in and uh, arm supports in, arm rail on. And what I need to do now is I need to bore the holes for the uh, long spindles. Go through right here. So <clears throat> now this gets a, a, a little bit trickier than it does with the thinner arm rail because I've got to pass through such a thick arm rail at an angle and you don't want to come out right here. It's not, I almost came out right there one time. You, <clears throat> that ruined the whole, whole arm rail. So it means that you've got to get, this is a 7 16 inch hole that I'm drilling here. It's going to be tapered from the bottom and I'll be showing you that. But uh, So I've got to get it back towards the back as far as I feel comfortable with. And uh, <clears throat> so I'll be about uh, a 3 8 light from the back of this and hopefully that will give me you know an eighth inch or so right here or at least a, a sixteenth uh, right there. I'm going to drill them two inches on center so we found our center uh, the last time or time before that or something like that we found it <clears throat> and uh, so I'll be uh, uh, so I've got my line drawn here three eighths from the back and now I'll just take this at two inches and <clears throat> and layer out. So there's nine spindles here. So uh, we'll bore these things. I'll set it down on the floor to to, to bore it. And uh, uh, but first, I want to back up <clears throat> because when I was when I originally bent this thing, and I've also bent one that was a thin arm rail like that to kind of show you an option, a simpler option. And whenever I was laying out and finding the position of this hole right here I forgot to show you how I do it on here it's it's just it's just a little bit different there's there's not a big deal there and you can probably figure it out but on this one since it's just the knuckle and there's no scroll over here on the side then it really doesn't matter where I place this this hole but over here because I have a hand hole <clears throat> with a scroll on the side it does so I'll show you over here the way I do that all right so if you remember, which you, if you don't, you can go back and look at the earlier videos to see how I found what this measurement right here was going to be. And I believe it actually came out to be about 12 and a quarter or something like that. You know, we did it with the rubber bands across through there and measuring here and all that. And uh, so then <coughs> we'll put the little tip marks there like that from that. And so we found out that those holes, let's just say, we're going to go right there along that line. So now you pick out one of the hand holes. I've probably got five or six different shapes and you know, just look at the old chairs and draw them or make up your own, whatever you want. And uh, so you can see on this one, you would want the hole for you would want the arm support hole where that point is right there. It would look kind of funny if it was back here uh, or up here. So you want it right there. And so that's all you would do. You would just position this to where where you've got this marked is ending up right there where you want that drilled. A handhold like this is a little more forgiving since it's round right here, and that's obviously where the arm support hole will go. But still, it's nice if it's just dead in the middle. So this enables you just to nail it just perfect. So uh, you've got your, your arm stump in the handhold exactly where you, where you want it. Uh, <clears throat> so I guess that's the last that we'll be visiting this. That's about the end of that. Everything else is pretty much like, like this arm rail right here. So I'll set that to the side and move my chair down to the floor and start boring.
some holes. So I'm going to bore this with an auger bit, which means I need something backing it up. If you bore it with a spoon bit, then you just go right on through. Uh, I've bored them with a spoon bit before, but a 7 16 spoon bit going through that much dry white oak is, is a little laborious. Uh, so I, I prefer the, the auger bit. And of course, you know, brad points and all that are, are good here too. Uh, and uh, so I'll give myself a little <clears throat> backing there so I can just go straight straight through <clears throat> and uh, put my drill bit up there and sock them on. hard that bit the threads didn't pull it through it stripped stripped out with me let me see if I can get it to to bite again here there it goes let's see it's looking good mm -hmm. See how good it is. Eh, pretty good. Not perfect. <clears throat> so be drilling this one. What you just got to make sure of here when you're going around and just sighting down there is that you're sighting at the right point. Doesn't do you any good how accurate you are. You are sighting at the right point. to a bit that has uh, coarser threads on it. This one gets a little fine for that white oak. So I thought I had a bit with a uh, with coarser threads which would be like one of the new Irwins, uh, but I don't. I think I remember somewhere way back I broke the tip off of it. But uh, I got this other Russell Jennings and uh, it looks to be the exact same threads as this Russell Jennings right here. But I just tried it and it sure did pull through a whole lot, a whole lot better. So, I don't know. any pressure at all it's just pulling right through so I don't know what the difference is they look the same
Yeah, still not perfect. I seem to be hitting slightly behind the hole. Ever so little. Oh, I yeah, those I finally straightened up a little bit. Those last two are just dead on there. How's that one right there? Yeah, yeah. Those are good. I just wasn't leaning back. I was lacking a degree or two leaning back, so I corrected them on these last four, and they're on it. These are just a tad bit hitting just a little bit behind the hole, a uh, little bit well within the uh, realm of putting it together with no problem, but uh, not just perfect. So now I need to uh, taper these for the uh, uh, spindles to fit up in there. If you remember when I was finishing the spindles, I fit them to a, uh, a tapered hole. So now I'm going to fit the spindles individually to each one of, each one of these. So I'll show you how to do that.